Well, happy day, great people. Welcome to another episode of Snap Political. So glad you're with me. So glad to be in the building. All right, guys. So the eyebrows is off. Told you I wasn't feeling them. I'm going to have to go and get my eyebrows done professionally. I have not seen the comments yet. And maybe you guys didn't have anything to say, but I just was not feeling those eyebrows. Okay. But anyway, what has been going on, great people? I hope you have been enjoying the content. And if you are looking for a specific content based off of what I do on this channel, give me some feedback. Let your girl know in the comment sections. So today, right now, we're talking about Trump, boo. We are talking about Trump. Yes, yes, and they're going to keep him on the Colorado ballot. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that, you know, what's been going on with him is we already know. Now, I, I can't say that I know everything that's been going on because I have not, I cannot consume news 24-8. You know, it, it, I can't. My mind is not going to function well off 24-8 news. I'm sorry. However, I have definitely been following Trump. You guys know that. Strong supporter. And just been seeing how the media and the government has been moving. We truly want to stay up on what's going on with him, especially as this race continues to approach us. Colorado judge rules Trump engaged in insurrection. I don't see how. But that's just what I feel. But it is not disqualified for holding office. Okay. So let's see. Let's see what he's talking about. And let me shout out to Glenn um, for his channel for having this content and making it where we can understand. And I can talk to you about it. Let's go. A judge has now ruled. Well, friends, a judge has now ruled that Donald Trump did, in fact, engage in an insurrection against the United States, but apparently <clears throat> the consequences for an American president trying to overthrow our democracy, not as serious as you might think. Let's talk about that. Because right. justice matters. It does. It really does. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, a Colorado judge, Judge Sarah Wallace, has ruled on the facts, on the evidence, that Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection against the United States. I wanna know how. But Judge Wallace what went did on they... to conclude that because um, how, the office guys? of the presidency is not, quote, an office under the United States, close quote, Trump is not disqualified from holding office again in the future, even though he engaged in an insurrection against the United States. Doesn't sound right, does it, friends? Hmm. Okay, as always, we are going to look for the silver lining while acknowledging the big dark cloud. Or maybe the big orange cloud is a better way to put mm -hmm. it. Let's start with the new reporting, and then let's look at some of Judge Wallace's 102-page legal ruling. Wow. This from NPR. Headline, a Colorado judge finds Trump engaged in insurrection, but keeps him on the ballot. And that article begins, a Colorado judge on Friday found that former President Donald Trump engaged in insurrection during the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol, but rejected an effort to keep him off the state's primary ballot because it's unclear whether a Civil War era constitutional amendment barring insurrectionists from public office applies to the presidency. So friends, Judge Wallace's written opinion is 102 pages long, but here's the interesting part. The first 95 pages are essentially a soup to nuts recitation mm. of the facts of the evidence that leads to the inescapable conclusion that Donald Trump did in fact engage in an insurrection against the United States. And that is what Judge Wallace concludes. That's what she finds. That's okay. how she rules and those factual findings are going to be really important moving forward. Mm -hmm. 
So I want to start with just some of the highlights found in those 95 pages and what Judge Wallace's conclusions based on the facts, based on the evidence were. We're going to start at paragraph 144, quote, the court finds that Trump's ellipse speech incited imminent lawless violence. Trump did so explicitly by telling the crowd repeatedly to fight and to fight like hell, to walk down to the Capitol, and that they needed to take back our country through strength. He did so implicitly by encouraging the crowd that they could play by very different rules because of the supposed fraudulent election. Okay, so now that to me can be a little subjective. Here it's saying they could play by very different rules because of the supposed fraudulent election. That may seem to be a little sketchy. Okay, what rules? But what does that mean? When you when you hear someone say fight, and then it's like you Paragraph can- Paragraph 145. You can fight, I'm trying to scroll up, like I have the article here. <laughs> but you, I mean, fighting with your words, standing up, this is very subjective. I'm, I'm not agreeing with this here. I'm not. In the context of the speech as a whole, as well as the broader context of Trump's efforts to inflame his supporters mm -hmm. through outright lies of voter fraud in the weeks leading up to January 6, 2021, and his long-standing pattern of encouraging political violence among his supporters, wow. this court finds that the call to fight and fight like hell was intended as and was understood by a portion of the crowd as a call to arms. Okay, so that explains the court it. court further finds, biased. based on the testimony. Already biased. Already biased. Already biased. That's how I feel. And documentary evidence presented that Trump's conduct and words were the factual cause of and a substantial contributing factor to the January 6, 2021 attack on the United States Capitol. We're going to jump to paragraph 288. The court concludes, based on its findings of fact and the applicable law detailed above, that Trump incited an insurrection on January 6, 2021, and therefore engaged in insurrection within the meaning of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. First, the court concludes that Trump acted with the specific intent to disrupt the Electoral College certification of President Biden's electoral victory through unlawful means, specifically by using unlawful force and violence. Next, How? the court concludes that the language Trump employed was likely to produce such lawlessness. Paragraph 293, hmm. the court concludes that Trump acted with the specific intent to incite political violence and direct it at the Capitol with the purpose of disrupting the electoral certification. Trump cultivated a culture that embraced political violence through his consistent endorsement of the same. He responded to growing threats of violence and intimidation in the lead up to the certification by amplifying his false claims of election fraud. It's not false. He convened a large crowd on the date of the certification in Washington, D.C., focused them. But how are they saying it's false now when we have clearly seen a couple of states and you can see where people have, who um, put in extra ballots? Come on, people. Come on. This is whack to me. On the certification process, told them their country was being stolen from them, called for strength and action, and directed them to the Capitol where the certification was about to take place. Paragraph 298. Consequently, the court finds that petitioners have established that Trump engaged in an insurrection on January 6, 2021, through incitement, and that the First Amendment does not protect Trump's speech. But friends, notwithstanding those dramatic factual findings that are entirely supported by the evidence that was developed during the course of this trial, 
In the last few pages of her 102-page ruling, Judge Wallace goes on to tackle the question of whether Donald Trump is therefore disqualified to hold office in the future. Here's what she says. Does Section 3 of the 14th Amendment apply to President Trump? For Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to apply to Trump, this court must find both that the presidency is an office under the United States and that Trump took an oath as an officer of the United States to support the Constitution of the United States. Here, after considering the arguments on both sides, the court is persuaded that officers of the United States did not include the President of the United States. Hmm. While the court agrees that there are persuasive arguments on both sides, the court holds that the absence of the president from the list of positions to which the amendment applies, combined with the fact that Section 3 specifies that the disqualifying oath is one to support the Constitution, whereas the presidential oath is to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution, it appears to the court that for whatever reason, the drafters of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment did not intend to include a person who had only taken the presidential oath. Hmm. Now, several constitutional scholars like Professor Lawrence Tribe and Judge Michael Ludig have already said that they believe Judge Wallace, in those last few pages, of that 102-page ruling got it egregiously wrong. Mm. But the appellate courts will decide because that portion of her ruling is being appealed. Hmm. But here's what I think we should keep our eye on and okay. hold fast to. Because Judge Wallace's factual findings that Donald Trump did engage in an insurrection against the United States are enormously consequential. Why? Because ordinarily on appeal, appellate courts will accept the factual conclusions of the judge because the judge was the one who was in the best position to see the witnesses testify, to assess their credibility, and to reach conclusions about what was proved by the evidence. So appellate courts typically will not disturb the factual findings and conclusions of a trial court judge unless they are clearly erroneous and that there is no evidence in the record supporting the judge's findings and conclusions. So the okay. fact that a trial court judge has made this finding based on the evidence after a trial that Donald Trump did engage in an insurrection against the United States will have far-reaching implications. Hmm. But here's the thing, friends, it is very hard to accept, and I do not accept, that the drafters of the Constitution believed that a president of the United States could engage in an insurrection, could try to overthrow American democracy, mm -hmm. and that person would not be disqualified from, again, pursuing the presidency, okay. from heading up the very government Right. He tried to overthrow. overthrow. Right, right. <clears throat> that doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like. But the how, appellate courts will sort it out. How is this? Let's hope. Let's hope the appellate courts get it right. Because justice matters. Friends. Okay. So for me. I like I feel like it's like a, a catch 22 here because to me it sounds like Glenn is supporting the fact and wants him to want them to find him guilty of an insurrection. I don't agree with the comments that with with her reasoning because those words to me are subjective. Now there's a specific sentence that may seem like it could ensue and you know people trying to overthrow. However, I don't necessarily agree with that. And hopefully, hopefully that it's not going to prevent him from running because I, 
I don't agree with that. That ne- the what he said, where where is the information that backs up and supports him leading or or, or making it sound like it's a physical fight when you go down to a certain place and you want to go when you want to go down to your um, local uh, political office and you want to go and talk with your legislators your senators congress and you go and you have the conversation that's standing up for what you believe that is fighting with your voice so I just don't understand where this is is tricky it's tricky it's very tricky, and I don't like how they did that. I was thinking the way he was, Glenn was talking, is that the uh, the information does not necessarily support the ruling, but it sounds like he may be in support of um, the judge. And I could be wrong, but that's what I kind of am inferring. But I, I don't support that. I don't agree at all. I feel as though that the information is subjective and she misruled and but the valid point that he made was how is it that he can still run and be on the ballot if he had an insurrection that's where the catch-22 is I'm like how is that possible so we need more explanation behind this but let me know what you guys think many of you are following um, have been following this and know a lot more about this for me and it's um, than me you know it's been a learning process and I've been wanting to share as I learn about you know politics and Trump's role and things like that in the government because many of us are Trump supporters and we are truly going to be at the polls two feet on the ground boo ready to um, cast that vote so Hopefully, um, many of you are making decisions as to who you want to vote for. It doesn't have to be Trump. If that if that's not leading you, if you don't want to do that, I truly understand. It's no judgment here, but stand behind something that you believe. That's because you believe it and not because everybody else is telling you to vote for that person. So let's get in the comment section. Great people. Let's keep our comments um, positive. We don't have to agree, but we can also have a discussion without getting ugly because you know how we do over here. Block and bless. All right, great people. Love you guys. I appreciate your support. Smash the like button. Let's get this video up in the likes, you guys, and share it.